Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your hostess, femininity coach and author the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So um, we got another one here that knows what marriage is all about. So we're not going to waste time. We're going to go ahead and get in to it. So here we go. And I used to see people in my family or just people in general have these 20, 30, 40 year marriages, right? When I was younger, I used to be like, wow, I want something like that. Like, I want to be so in love with somebody that I'm with them for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and we die together. I used to think that what held marriages together for that long was true love. And of course, communication, understanding, sacrifice, all those things. Let me tell y'all what really holds marriages together. Women just putting up with shit. That's all it is. When you understand that all it takes to keep a man is for you to constantly be forgiving bullshit and constantly be just be like, oh, okay, I don't want to lose him. So I'm going to forgive this. I'm going to forgive that. That's all. That's all a long marriage is. If your perspective on marriage is only on the negatives and the fact that you might have to put up with this, then don't get married. If you lack the fortitude, the drive, the resilience, the long suffering and the patience needed to maintain a healthy marriage, do not get married. Because you know what I've noticed that this generation truly lacks? endurance when things get hard we automatically just quit this job is not doing it for me it's not serving me i quit this relationship is no longer serving me i quit that's the new term they, they're using now when we no longer see what we can get out of things instead of making the situation better we remove ourselves we lacked conflict and resolution we just quit when things get hard any relationship worth having is going to take work and effort to maintain but it's up to you to determine which relationships are worth doing that for for the long run because we all have ish to put up with not just in marriages but with our friends even with our family and it's also a two-way street it's not just you having to put up with his ish he has to put up with your ish too yeah he has to put up with your trauma your triggers your baggage i can honestly say if there's one thing that i'm learning in marriage it's to pick my battles because not everything is worth bickering about will this matter in the next five minutes will this matter tomorrow will this matter in a year okay if not then why am i gonna argue about it our mothers and fathers and grandparents weren't weak because they decided to put up with ish we're resilient and they saw that marriage sometimes takes sacrifice they saw the bigger picture and didn't want to break up a happy home because of something that was easily forgivable and of course not everything is easily forgivable but when you really love someone you're willing to look past certain things it's not because they're afraid to be alone but because they see the bigger picture and it doesn't mean that you can't have standards or drawbacks. It's just you learn to communicate through it all. I mean, you're both still learning each other. As the years go by, we're constantly changing. The person that you married years ago is not the person that you're going to be married to today. And that's okay. We need to give each other the grace to grow and just be patient with each other more. But yeah, if you're watching this and this is not something that you want to do, you know, marriage, then it's okay. Don't get married. But don't speak down to the sacred union because you're not willing to go to the hardships and trials that come with it. <laughs> So you heard both perspectives. You heard the perspective of um, an unmarried woman that doesn't know what she's talking about. And you heard the perspective of a newly married woman that's actually learning what it is to be married. And the first woman who spoke is speaking to the trauma and to the negative outlook on marriage. And then the reason why so many modern women have a negative outlook on marriage isn't because they've gone through marriages and that they now they have a negative outlook. It's because they can't get into them. And so this is a sour grapes type of situation. Well, I don't think that I can do this. So let me cast aspersions on it and they're always going back to marriages that they have no idea what went on 
in those unions and in those households, the grandma's marriage and the, the, you know, their grandmama might not even been married, but it's popular to say it that the women of older generations only maintain marriages because they were stupid. They only could maintain a marriage because they were desperate. They only could maintain a marriage because they was mammies. They only could maintain marriage because they was pick -me's. They only could maintain marriage because they didn't want to be lonely and without a man. They only maintain, see, see the negative, oh, this is how marriages are conducted. And this is how they stay long. How, how she would know that I'll never know because that was, she's not married. There are always sacrifices to be made in any relationship because y'all, the, the same ones talking about how they don't want to put up with a man's stuff in marriages just to make a marriage work. will put up with their boss's stuff to make that job work a job. They hate, they hate their coworkers. They hate their bosses and they clock in every single day without fail because, and then they, and they do, and they do their best work at a company that will never value them at, with people that would replace them in a heartbeat. Okay. They will give the same amount of time, 20, 30 years. They'll give all of this time to men who won't commit to them. They'll have children. They'll put up with other baby mamas. They'll put up with so-called outside babies outside the relationship. They put up with all of this stuff with no commitment and then try to project that onto a marriage. Well, if my boyfriend did this to me, then a man that I'm married to would also do this to me. But you're basing this on a relationship with a man that didn't think enough of you to lock you down or to uh, commit to you in the first place. So who knows what he wants to do? He's making it very clear that you're not it. You don't do it for him. I don't care how long he's with you. If he had makes no commitment at all before neither God nor man about who you are to him, then he's already shown you what it is and y'all have babies, y'all stay, you know, all kinds of stuff. Go through all kinds of trials and tribulations with a man that doesn't see any value in being with you at all. And you will try with him for years, like it's crazy. And then we talk about a healthy relationship and a marriage and a commitment and not even putting up with no cheating or nothing like that. See, y'all always want to put it off on cheating, but y'all don't like to do anything in a marriage. Y'all don't like to do anything in a marriage. Not even so much as listening to your husband's sound advice. When he's giving you sound advice, you don't listen. When he is doing things the right way, you're quote unquote bored. When he's doing what he's supposed to do, then there's always something else that you wanted him to do. When he, you know, so it's never ending with y'all anyways. So it doesn't matter what the men do or what they don't do. Just say that you don't have what it takes to participate in a healthy marriage because you don't know what healthy relationships look or feel like. You have no resilience. And you don't have any conflict resolution skills. You don't have any emotional self-discipline. You don't have any discipline over your mouth. You don't have any discipline over your thoughts. You don't have any discipline over your emotional output or anything. You don't have good conversational skills. Your communication is bad. You expect people to be mind readers and reading your feelings and reading all this other stuff and just feeling you and vibing with you and reading into you without you having to articulate what it is that's going on so that things can be rectified. You don't know how to come at an issue in the right spirit. You come at him in this angry, bitter, you know, um, basically this demonic spirit and you want problems to be solved. You don't have think about sometimes to just come in a godly, peaceful spirit so that you can resolve problems. Anytime there's problem in relationship, it's never you and your husband facing a problem. You always look at him as if he's the problem. 
that needs to be solved. Trust and believe your, your, your husband will be putting up with stuff with you too, because women are not this picnic and not innocent either. Cause you come in with all your baggage. You come with all your trauma. Some of y'all coming with babies. Some of y'all coming with unhealed things that you want him to be your rock and salvation for. And he's supposed to put up with that and not say a mumbling word and just love you through it. Y'all need to get out of here with that nonsense. Just say you're not equipped for a healthy marriage. It's, it's fine. We know you're not equipped because you don't get married. And, and a lot of y'all that do get married can't, get, can't stay long because you're not equipped for healthy relationships. So jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, Sister Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites.